If you are here, it means you are probably curious why this video might disappear soon. And here is why. I am talking about nudity. Not the clickbait kind, not some scandal, but the nudity that fills the world's greatest museums. The kind people have celebrated and revered for hundreds, even thousands of years. So, here we are, the 21st century, with technology on every corner and cameras in every hand, but it feels as we are stuck in the dark ages. You could think, with all this progress, with all this freedom of expression, we'd be free to look at art. But for social media, it's a problem. Censored, flagged, pixelated. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. These platforms have something against the human form, even when it's art. Community guidelines, they called it. They got their lines drawn, and God forbid if you cross them. These are all American companies. It's funny, isn't it? The land of the free. Some people who go wild for blood and guns in video games draw the line at the statue of David or the painting of Venus. Go on, cover them up, they say. And why? Because some woman out in the middle America might blush. The same woman might visit shops at the mall with a lingerie store right next to the family restaurant. But when it comes to art, the good stuff, the immortal art of countless artists, suddenly becomes a thing that it's all about modesty. And don't even think about the free the nipple movement. A whole movement fighting just to show something as natural as, well, nipple. Or feeding a baby. Because in America, land of free, Men are in the driving seat, and they got to say what women can and can't do. From abortion rights to breastfeeding in public, something every single person wants depended on, men get the final word. It's weird, isn't it? Why do a handful of tech companies get to say what the world can see? The whole world now follows these American rules. Here is what is mind-blowing to me. In museums, in the cathedrals, you can see all of the art, no problem. Even the Vatican, surrounded by art that celebrates human beauty, is okay with it. And if the Pope is fine with it, who decides it's too dangerous for Karen in Kansas or Joe in Florida to see it? To get why nudity is such a taboo in the US, we need to rewind to America's first days. Puritism. That's where it all starts. United States of America's roots go back to this weird push and pull with freedom and restriction. Something that shaped the country. In early settlements in America, these people came over from Europe, kicked out from England for being too prudish, and they set up places such as Massachusetts Bay Colony, they didn't take kindly to fun or art, or God forbid, a little bit of skin. Puritan settlers in New England wanted order and control of every part of life, right down to what people wore, how they behaved, and even what they could think about. They were the moral cops, the original decency patrol, setting laws to keep things modest, plain, and godly. Art was dangerous. Expression was dangerous. Freedom, something that Americans celebrate so much, well, that was practically a sin. It wasn't just laws, it was the entire mindset. The colony of Massachusetts was strict, rigid, where anything remotely fun or free-spirited was suspect. But not everyone in early America bought this story. There was a little place called Mary Mount, set up by a guy named Thomas Morton. Mary Mount was an outlier, a place where people danced, celebrate, and just live freely. If you never heard about it, that's because it didn't last long. It was too different, too relaxed. Puritan leaders saw it as a threat. They hated it, 
couldn't stand seeing people enjoying themselves. So they wiped Merry Mount out, tore it apart until nothing was left but their stiff, repressed ideals. If Merry Mount had survived, if it had become the model for America, maybe American culture and the rules of these social platforms today would be less strict, a little more accepting. Maybe USA would have grown up with a different outlook. Maybe social media platforms made in USA would not ban the statue of Venus or a photo of mother breastfeeding. We might have art that was free and uncensored. We look at these places, for example Afghanistan, we criticize their fundamentalism, the way their laws control expression and women's right. But what about the United States? They're running on some of the same Puritan gas, dressed up in community standards. But let's call it as it is, censorship. Censorship, either in US, Soviet Union, Afghanistan, China, it's all the same. If women in the United States are told by some boardroom full of men what they can and what they can do with their bodies, from what they post online to whether they can breastfeed in public, something is wrong. And if we can't even share art, the raw, honest truth of the human body, it is a sign of just how deep these old puritanical roots still run. Here's what's crazy. People have the power to shut down what they don't want to see. The platforms assume that everybody is fragile and they enforce this across the board. If someone in New York, Stockholm, Bangladesh or Kinshasa wants to share something bold, something genuine, they risk getting flagged or censored just to appease some community standards. It is strange to think that these great works of art from Paleolithic to contemporary art, created to inspire, to challenge us, are now seen as dangerous. The nudity of the human body is dangerous. Let it sink in. And all of this, because of the lingering mindset from centuries ago, a fear of human body itself. But in Europe, walk into church, look up at the ceiling, and you will see angels, nymphs, and God, in all their glory, uncensored, celebrated. So, art deserves freedom. The human form deserves freedom. If we are so afraid of nudity, so afraid of the very thing that connects us all, what does that say about us? Are we really just following rules out of habit? Or do we actually believe they are protecting us from something like sin? Maybe it is time to start questioning who we are protecting and whether we even need protecting in the first place. So here's to you, people of United States. Art doesn't need your permission. And to guys over the YouTube, Instagram and all those social media, all of you, consider this plea. Let us see art as it was made, raw and real. And if you don't, people will find other platforms to express themselves. This concludes this episode. I want to thank you for joining and listening. I hope I inspired you. I hope you learned something. The music is performed by my friend Sebastian. You can check his band Cadaver. There is a link below. Enjoy the song. Until the next time. Goodbye.